Welcome back to the Actuary Magic Channel. I'm Steve, the Actuary. Today we have a video about Shorakai Genesis Engine from the Buckle Up Commander deck. And but before we get into that, I want to let you know we are sponsored today by MTG On Command. They make a really, really cool deck box that has that your commander can hang out in here, be placed on the table, held in place by a magnet. I've even stood on one of these. There's a video in my <laughs> in my following if you want to go check that out. But let's get into it. Oh, stay to the end. There's combos, two combos, two different types of combos at the end. Thank you. <laughs> All righty then, shall we? All right, so Shorkai is really, really cool. He is a four drop uh, artifact vehicle. So everyone that I've been talking to has been saying Shorkai is way more powerful than the other commander. And so I'm going to talk about him today because I think a lot of people are building around him. All right, so Shorkai is a legendary artifact vehicle that's one mana and tap. Draw two cards, then discard a card. Cool. Create a 1-1 one, one colorless pilot creature token with this creature crew's vehicles as though its power were two greater. So it can crew as if its power is three. Uh, it's really, really great. So it's got, uh, but Shorkai's got a crew eight, which is a little bit ridiculous, but he can be your commander. So that's what we're talking about today is using Shorakai. Now being able to draw two, discard one is really good. And I really think that you should probably be playing a copy of Elixir of Immortality. Since you're going to be putting so many dang cards into your graveyard from, uh, from your hand, Elixir of Immortality is going to let you reset because you're going to be going through so many cards. Any way that you have to untap, uh, Shorakai is just going to be gravy, but having uh, as many activations as you can with Shorakai is going to be pretty fantastic. Um, looking at him though, you're going to want to be able to protect him and Shorakai is best protected by these here. These are the, some of the best, uh, counter spells in the format for him. Swan Song counters an instant sorcery or, uh, enchantment gives him a two, two fluster storm. It has counter target spell unless it's controller pays one and storm. So it gets bigger, the longer, uh, the further into the chain of counters it goes. And then fierce guardianship says counter target non creature spell. And he may pay this without paying his mana cost. If you control your commander. Now, about this though, everybody that I've been uh, talking to that's been playing Shorakai says Shorakai gets ignored a lot at the table, which is fantastic. We love it whenever our commander gets to get, do his thing or her thing or its thing as long as possible. But these are going to be good even if we're not protecting our commander, but we're protecting our board. These are amazing. Madness was the first idea that really came to mind. So these are only going to work after Shorakai's ability has resolved. Once his ability has resolved, then nagging thoughts and circular logic can be discarded and played for their madness effects. Nagging thoughts um, has a madness cost of two. It says, look at the top two cards of your library, put one of them in your hand and the other in your graveyard. So you draw your two and discard one with Shorakai, and then nagging thoughts is going to go be able to go into the stack and look at the next two cards. Circular logic says counter target spell unless its controller pays one for each card in your graveyard. Cool but you can then use it as its madness cost to counter something else. But the, here's the thing is you have to get all the way through Shorakai's ability resolving and then circular logic being discarded um, can be put onto the stack with its madness for one and then counter something else that's already on the stack. So it's a, it's a technicality, but I think it's really, really important to point out. Next up, we have our flashback cards. The first ones that came to mind are Faithful Mending and Mass Diminish. Faithful Mending is going to gain you two life, draw you two cards, then discard two cards, and flashback for a blue, a white, and a generic, and it's at instant speed. Mass Diminish, though, I think is really, really powerful in this build. It says one blue, one generic. It says until your next turn, creatures, target player controls have base power toughness one one. So they don't lose their abilities, but it really will shrink a whole team. And it flashes back for a blue and three generic. So if you have to pitch it to the yard, it's not useful right now. You can use it again later. And it's a um, very, very good card, I think, personally. Uh, next up, we have some Disturb Mechanics. Faith Bound Judge. Uh, he's a three drop, four, four flying with Vigilance. It says at the beginning of your upkeep, if Faith Bound Judge has two or fewer counters on it, put a Judgment Counter on it. And as long as there are three more judgment counters on it, it can attack as though it didn't have Defender. But it has Disturb for seven. So this is going to be a later game thing. It says at the beginning of your upkeep, or you can disturb it for seven. So you pay 
double white and five generic. At the beginning of your upkeep, put a judgment counter on center's judgment. If you have any proliferate, that's gonna just accelerate this process. If there are three or more judgment counters on it, enchanted player, player loses the game. Sweet. <laughs> So it's a, an aura curse you t attach to somebody, and then you can have something ticking away on their life. If you take any extra turns, that's going to be fantastic. Any proliferate is going to be fantastic. Note, though, it has to trigger at your upkeep uh, in order for the lose um, lose the game thing to happen. <laughs> oh, stay away. Stay to the end. We got counters. I'm sorry. Combos. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Disturb B. Okie dokie. Mail Event Hermit, I think, is really cool. Like, I think he's just a good card to just have sitting out there. Because people are going to forget that he has this counter ability built into him. For one blue, he's at one blue and one generic. He's a 2-1 that says, pay a blue, sack him. Counter target non-creature spell unless his controller pays three. Fantastic. Then you can disturb him. So he's already in the graveyard. For a blue and two generic, he comes back as a 2-2 flying. It says, non-creature spells you control can't be countered. That means... All of our vehicles, instants, sorceries, enchantments can't be countered anymore, which is really relevant if you're playing in a more competitive environment with a ton of counter spells. Uh, discarding more of it. Okay, Spirit Cairn. Cairn? 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 Oh, anyway, <laughs> for a white and two generic, it says whenever a player discards a card, you may pay one white if you do create a 1 1 white spirit creature token with flying. So this helps us rebuild the board after a board wipe and also crew our giant vehicles. Uh, bag of Holding for one generic says whenever you discard a card, exile that card from your graveyard. Sweet. Two generic, tap, draw a card, then discard a card. Okay, cool. Four generic, tap, sack, return all cards, exile a bag of holding to their owner's hand. So this is really, really powerful. So instead of just pitching to our graveyard, we can start pitching to Bag of Holding, and that just kind of sits out there now granted you have to be careful holding up that four mana so that you can keep so you can uh activate bag of holding at instant speed if you need to but it's a really powerful card uh next up we have some more discarding mechanics drake haven is going to whenever you discard a card you may pay one get a 2-2 flyer much like spirit cairn but it's only for you uh two two with flying curator mysteries it's a good body but also it says whenever you cycle or discard another card scry one yes that's just value before we even look at the top two cards to draw and discard we're going to look at the um we're going to also get to scry it's a lot of a lot of added value making sure that the best cards on top are getting there uh more discarding okay mystic redaction sphinx's tutelage and Teferi's Tutelage all kind of do the same thing, but slightly different. Mystic Redaction says at the beginning of your upkeep, scry one. It says whenever you discard a card, each opponent mills two cards. Okay. Sphinx's Tutelage says whenever you draw a card, target opponent puts the top two cards of his or her library into his or her gra uh, graveyard. So Mystic Redaction is each opponent on your discard, and Sphinx's Tutelage is the target opponent upon your draw. Um, it, but Sphinx's Tutelage will also re-trigger if those car non-line cards uh, share a color. Okay, um, with Painter's Servant, that'll just go infinite for the record. Uh, okay, for four generic, or sorry, for five and a blue, it draws a card and discards a card. We don't care about that. And then we have one more Teferi's Tutelage when it enters the battlefield. Draw a card, then discard a card. Whenever you draw a card, target opponent mills two cards. Again, more of the same. Containment Construct. This, I don't know why it's not in the pre-con basically should be it's for two generic two one it says whenever you discard a card you may exile that card from your graveyard if you do you may play that card this turn Whew, that's powerful put a sun titan in your graveyard with a uh, shorakai's ability and then play him the shorakai's ability i mean with uh, just play him with containment constructs ability it's really good really powerful uh then we also have an escape mechanic the only escape card that i thought was really really good for this build, I say really good. Uh, it's a four drop uh, Hellspice Sun's Nemesis and Shadow Spear there. It's looking so good. <laughs> uh, it's going, She enters with five loyalty. She has nothing but negative abilities, but negative one up to tar two target creatures each get plus two, plus one until end of turn. If we go swinging with our commander, we can start really putting the hurt on, but negative two, create two one one white human soldier creature tokens, help us, us repopulate the board. Then negative five, gain five life. I'm sorry, negative three, gain five life. Escape for six, exile four cards from your graveyard. We're gonna have a ton of cards that aren't gonna be useful to us because of drawing and discarding so many cards. Elspeth Sun's Nemesis is gonna come back. It's pretty good. Uh, next up, we have some draw mechanics with uh, our artifact spells. Riddlesmith 
is going to uh, draw and discard us a card whenever we cast an artifact. And Velcid and Archmage is just going to straight up draw us a card upon casting an artifact spell. These are cast triggers. These aren't uh, whenever they enter the battlefield. Number eight on our list, brah! Pow! Restoration of a Jango, I think, is a pretty solid way. Its first lore counter is going to get us a planes, a basic planes from our library, and put it into our hand. Good. But then our two lore, lore counter says you may discard a card when you do return target partner card with mana value two or less from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. So this means all of our fetch lands, all of our... Um, <clears throat> If we happen to have had discarded some kind of like a signet or something like that, or talisman, or the um, all kinds of good things that we can return with restoration of a Django. Then for three, it exiles and turns into a three, four body that creates one, one colorless free creature tokens whenever it attacks or blocks. This is just going to help us repopulate the board. If we board wipe on lore counter one and two, then whenever three comes around, we're gonna be able to start building a board state. That's very, very good. Number seven on our list, just straight up goodies, is Sun Titan. Again, this dude's gonna have so many target targets, it's gonna be ridiculous. For six mana, six, six Vigilance Giant, it says whenever you enter the battlefield or attacks, you may return target permanent card with mana value three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. I don't know why this card's not more expensive. I would assume it's because it's just got a billion printings, but I think it just gets played so frequently. It's just such a good card. But anyway, Sun Titan gets back anything, even your fetches. All right, number six on our list, arguably could be way higher, but Snapcaster Mage, again, he enters the battlefield at flash speed, and he says, when it enters, target instant or sorcery card from your graveyard, gains flash flashback until end of turn, the flashback cost is equal to its mana cost. So if we pitch something earlier in the game, Snapcaster is going to allow us to cast that instant or sorcery again at instant speed, it's fantastic. Okay. Now, number five on our list, Oh, Dance in the Mance. Again, could be higher on a list, but it's just, there's so many good cards. For a blue, a white, and X, return up to X target artifact and or non, uh, or enchantment cards, each mana value X or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. If X is six or greater, those permanents are four, four creatures in addition to their other types. So good, so powerful. It, it's just gonna win you the game upon resolution. Again, it has to resolve, but we got, we got stuff for that. <laughs> Number four on our list. Echo of Eons. It's good to just cast this for six, but it says each player shuffles their, their hand graveyard into their library, then draws seven cards. Or you can pitch it to a Shorakai, then flash it back for three. Really, really good. It's a wheel effect, but it also gets all your stuff from your graveyard, which you're already naturally doing, back into your library. Then number three on our list, Emery, Lurker of the Lock. For three, one, two, spell is casting costs, there's one less for each artifact you control. All your signets, all your fast mana are going to make this so much easier to cast. When she enters the battlefield, mill four cards. Okay, fine. Uh, tap. Choose her artifact card in your graveyard. You may cast that card this turn. She's going to be kind of a secret commander in this deck. She's very, very powerful. Then number two, no surprises. Jin Gitaxius. Okay, progress tyrant. This dude is disgusting. I had somebody resolve him the other night whenever I was playing Kess, and I was angry. I tried to let the salt go, but it was hard. It was hard. <laughs> Uh, he says, he's a 7 drop 5-5, five, five. whenever you, you cast an artifact, instant, or sorcery spell, copy that spell. You may choose new targets for the copy, this ability only triggers once each turn. But still, being able to copy, like, your, your signets, or your, um, what do you call it, all your counter spells. Your counter spells means that you just win counter spell battles. Um, but then at the bottom here, it says, whenever an opponent casts an artifact, instant, or sorcery spell, counter that spell. This ability triggers only once each turn. So if you have th two or three opponents and one of them casts something, that gets countered, and then you, and then another player casts another thing, that second one uh, will not get countered. Just clarifying that. Oh, man, but he's so hard to play against. Oh, he's so gross. Anyway, number one on our list, brrr, pew, Library of Lang. I personally think that this is probably the best and most auto-included card, and I picked the <laughs> the errated version of the card. It's for one mana, it says you have no maximum hand size. If an effect causes you to discard a card, discard it, but you may put it on top of your library instead of into your graveyard. You have the choice. It's so much flexibility, especially good with things that have Miracle in them. And I didn't even include Miracle in this list, but it is so good. Library of Link says, ah, discard it right to the top of your library. Yes, please. 
<laughs> and it doesn't have to be an opponent's effect, which is really, really useful. All right, let's talk about our combos. So, free from the rill, plus Fate Stitcher is basically, I'm going to go untappy tappy 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 -roo infinitely. So, free from the rill says, and also Pemmin's Aura will work for this as well. It says, 4 3 enchanted creature, for, and then pay one blue to untap the enchanted creature. Awesome. Face Stitcher says you may tap it, you may tap or untap another target permanent. Okay. But on Earth for one blow. So you can play this during somebody else's turn, enchant free from the reel on top of it, and then hold on. We're going to create infinite blue mana. So Fate Stitcher is going to, we're going to float mana with Azorius Chancery. That one blue is going to untap Fate Stitcher with Free From The Reel's ability. Fate Stitcher is then going to untap Azorius Chancery with its tap ability. Floating a blue and a white, we untap uh, Azorius, or sorry, a Fate Stitcher with uh, Free From The Reel and that blue mana. Bop, 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 rinse and repeat, and we now have infinite white mana. Fantastic. Now, we can do all kinds of other things if we have infinite mana. There's a number of ways you can just draw people out, like Blue Sun Zenith, it comes to mind. Um, but you also, again, have to have a ton of blue mana. But this is a fantastic, fantastic way of getting infinite mana. But next, we also have ways of just locking your opponents out of doing anything fun. For instance, with our infinite mana, we can cast Stasis and Smothering Tithe. Oh my goodness. Okay, Stasis. I'm sure I'm not surprising anybody with this combo. But for a blue and a generic, it says players skip their untapped steps. At the beginning of your upkeep, sacrifice Stasis unless you pay a blue. Great. Smothering Tide says a four. One white and three generic says whenever an opponent draws a card, that player may pay two. If that player doesn't, you create a colorless artifact token with tap, sack this artifact, add one man of any color. So if you have three opponents, one of those opponents is going to give you at least one treasure that you can sack to pay for stasis ability at your upkeep. The other two players that draw and they don't, they can't pay for the tax are then going to give you two more treasures to do stuff on your turn. So you really lock the game out really hard, really hard. It is not fun. <laughs> but then additionally, you can add, you can change it up. If you've got a lot of artifacts that are your mana base, then you can play. Oh my goodness unwinding clock so for four generic it says untap all artifacts you control during each other player's untap step it's disgusting it's not fun it's not fair but being able to tap all of your artifacts use your stuff during your turn all your signets all of your <clears throat> signets your fast mana all that stuff it's going to untap with an unwinding clock and now stasis is just going to lock other people out of the game it's gross <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for coming out, y'all. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Again, MTG on Command has been our sponsor today. If you uh, if you want to check them out, there's a 10% uh, discount code in the description below. I really like this one. Like, you can't see it really well here, but this one, you can see the honeycombing effect. And it's a really, really cool uh, red this time. It's like almost like an orange. And I really like the uh, honeycomb effect on the inside. Anyway, y'all, I hope you have a great day. Love you. Where's my button? <laughs> button.